Do you have numbness, burning, and tingling in the toes, on the top of the foot? Look at all these nerves. Look at all these muscles. This might be something called peripheral neuropathy, and this can be a dangerous thing that causes permanent problems for your foot. Learn how to diagnose it, how to stop it, how to make that pain go away. And we're starting right now. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. We appreciate your likes, your subscribes, your comment. We really love hearing if this stuff helps. It really makes a big difference for us, so thank you. Peripheral neuropathy, look at this. There's a lot of nerves up here. It's a very, very controversial topic. It causes a lot of people problems, and there's a lot of supplements out there. When I did a presentation at this at a recent conference, there was 600 papers out that year with different causes, like 50 plus major causes. It's such a confusing topic, so overwhelming. There's diabetes, there's alcohol, there's blood sugar, there's thyroid disease, there's chemotherapy, there's getting old, there's getting achy muscles, there's working too hard. All these things can damage muscles. But specifically, here's what happens to most people. They, in these little nerves that come up the foot, they get that numbness, they get that burning, they get that tingling. It feels like their toes are cold, they're not adjusting to temperature, especially in the winter. Especially if you live in Michigan, you're getting hammered with snow and your toes are cold all the time, that might be more of a nerve problem than a blood flow problem. But here's what this usually means is, the smaller nerves can get damaged. So you can't sense temperature as well and you get aching tingling pain and it causes problems. Your muscles usually still work. So peripheral neuropathy, I'm gonna get to the meat of this, is 90% of the time there's a lot of things you can do about it. But for the sick people, if you're really poorly off with a lot of health conditions, a lot of the times medication might be needed and treating your underlying health problems. So for example, if your blood sugar is off the charts high, we're talking like blood sugar levels of 200, simply getting that back down to normal levels will make all that nerve pain go away. Or if you drink a six pack of alcohol every day, simply stopping that will make that nerve pain go away. Or maybe if you weigh 400 pounds, getting down 50 pounds or 100 pounds can make that nerve pain get a whole lot better. So listen, if you have a severe health issue, you have to go see your podiatrist or your family care doctor. Get evaluated because that's the real key to some of these. But 90% of the time, there's a lot of stuff that you can do to make your foot feel better and that's what we're gonna get at. So this is a very controversial topic and we're gonna try and do our best to get people some help here. So if it's nighttime pain, there is a lot of stuff. Even if you're unhealthy, even if you have health problems, there's still some major things you can do. The reality is most nerve pain is biomechanical. So for an example, if I punched you in the shoulder 50 times in a row, I'm gonna give you some nerve damage. It's gonna take you a week for that nerve damage to go away. Does that make sense? It doesn't mean you have a nerve disease in your shoulder, even though if you're diabetic, it might hurt a little bit worse or you might be numb ahead of time. But my point with this is people walk and their foot hits the floor. They're barefoot and they're overweight and they have arthritis and their feet are hitting the ground and it's getting bruised up. You don't know what it's like to not have sore feet. You work on concrete. You walk barefoot on hard floors. You have a lot of joint problems. You have a lot of hammer toes, bunions, a lot of achy muscles. This is the kind of basic stuff you can help immediately, like right now during this video. So one key thing is, tip number one, this is kind of cheating, but go see your podiatrist. Get evaluated, sometimes x-rays, MRI imaging. I've seen people loaded up on like Lyrica and Gabapentin. A couple simple diagnoses makes that numbness, burning, and tingling go away. So realistically, if you have a podiatrist that you can go see, go see it because sometimes it's a quick, easy solution that's no medication, but we're gonna try and go over some of these right now. But the first thing you wanna do is ice and massage your feet. That's the simple, easiest thing. So there's some massage equipment out there. I like foam rollers, I like massage sticks, and I like ice balls. Massaging is best performed with either a cold can or non-cold devices. Sometimes with peripheral neuropathy, cold stuff can irritate your nerves. If it's true peripheral neuropathy, the cold may be bad, but if it's musculoskeletal, 
icing a bottle, and I'd be careful using a can. A plastic bottle might be better so it doesn't explode in your fridge, but just roll it for like 10 to 15 minutes on the bottom of your arch. There are some fancy ice ball devices out there. You can use them on the bottom of your foot, but the problem is they don't really stick around, so thumbs down on that one. Realistically, use a ice bottle, but if it's in your legs, in your calf muscles, that can work great. These rubber balls, they're like a dollar. They really come with other stuff. Uh, you can get these for dirt cheap prices. It doesn't have to be anything expensive. But sitting there or even standing on this thing, it can really work out your arch if it's your plantar fascia. And there's harder ones, there's softer ones. I'm using a harder one right here. That can really stretch out uh, and get rid of a lot of that swelling right there. Once you massage, I always recommend massaging first. Look at that. It gives me much more flexibility right after that. I massaged my hamstrings and my calf muscles already, but then you stretch. So realistically, if you can't reach your toes, start with a towel. Just bend up that hamstring, bend up that calf muscle, get that pulled up, get it in good shape, get that foot feeling really good. And that does a great job. So you can do your right foot and then you can do your left foot, but getting that fluid out of there, getting that stiffness out of there, especially before you go to bed or when you wake up in the morning, this will really pay dividends in terms of getting that swelling and eventual nerve pain down. A great home remedy is this, BioFreeze. You can roll this on your foot. This works like ice, but studies show it lasts about twice as long. It tingles for like 30 seconds, then your nerve pain goes away. So this is a great instant home remedy that works right away. BioFreeze is cheap and it makes that pain go away pretty quickly. Capsaicin is another one. This is a cheap over-the-counter thing, but you put it on your skin, it kind of sends the signals up, but then your brain stops paying attention. That can make that pain go away pretty quickly. All these lasers, stuff like that, there's some studies, but realistically, these are expensive treatments that aren't very well proven. You know, you might as well stick with some stuff like this first, the massages, the exercise, the icing, rather than going like with the thousand dollar treatments every week. Medications, there's a lot of scammy type stuff out there because uh, you know, people are in a lot of pain, they're desperate. But what do the studies show? Vitamin B, as in boy, is a great option, so there's some great medications out there like nerve medications but realistically taking a daily multivitamin and taking some supplements every morning you don't have to go crazy and buy that hundred dollar a week type stuff don't buy anything that expensive because the studies show it helps maybe like five to ten percent realistically take medications only to fix your severe health problems don't over supplement on unproven stuff Walk it off. Getting up in the middle of the night and getting your blood flow down, it gets your venous flow going and it gets your blood flow going. If you feel better with your legs on the ground, that means you might have a arterial problem. But if you feel better with your feet up, that might mean a venous problem. Again, if you're old, like over 65 or you're smoking, go check that out with your podiatrist. They can check your blood flow. But realistically, that can help your swelling. 90% of the people are gonna have swelling in the middle of the night, and that swelling stretches these little nerves. So see these little nerves? When they stretch, when you're not moving because your foot muscles aren't moving, it stretches those nerves. That can send zaps, that can send tingling. If you just massage out some of that swelling, or even wear some socks with some basic compression, it won't swell as much, and those nerves won't shoot up. So a great option is compression socks. Some basic socks that provide compression, they can really keep that swelling down during the day. That's another great option that will prevent those nerves from stretching. Technically, that prevents nerve damage. Soak it away, a foot bath. So warm bath, Epsom salts, all this kind of stuff can make you feel better. It can increase how quick some of that swelling gets out of your foot. So that's another great option to get the swelling down and get that nerve pain to stop stretching as much and hurting as much. Skip alcohol. Alcohol drinking, especially daily drinking, that's what can do it. That's the second biggest cause is alcoholic neuropathy. So cut down on the alcohol. Smoking. Smoking is another big one. Cut down the smoking, that's another huge cause. Peripheral arterial disease, which is too much smoking, causes blood flow problems. That can cut off blood flow to your nerves. Huge cause. Go see your doctor if you're having problems with this. Sleeping is another big one. If you're not getting enough sleep, and for most people that's seven to nine hours a day, or if your high quality of sleep is not good, 
that could be a reason. People, especially after surgeries or something, if they don't sleep enough, like four hours or three hours, then you're gonna interpret pain as much as two to three times. So if you're in chronic pain and you're not sleeping well, it's kind of like a chicken or the egg. Ideally, you wanna get as good a sleep as possible, but I know if you're having a lot of pain, sometimes you can't sleep. It all feeds into itself like a big ball. Creams and oils. There is evidence that oils like lavender oil, tea tree oil, moisturizing oil, these can really help the sensation in the skin. They are not obvious articles like, hey, these articles do not say like this will guarantee cure it, but it can make it feel better. So test out some of the available oils. As long as you're not spending crazy amounts of money, it's worth a shot to see if it works for you. And that brings me to moisturizing. So great creams, even like Gold Bond diabetic creams, that kind of thing, moisturize every night. So if you take a shower, for example, in the winter, that can dry out your skin. Moisturize afterwards, that's gonna make a huge difference. Realistically, like Lyrica, Gabapentin, all these things, if you've tried all this basic stuff and it's not working, these medications can make it go away, but they have a lot of side effects and they're lifelong creams. But if you're really up there in age, if your health is so bad that it's hard to turn that health back and you're like, hey, I've tried everything, I've tried all the advanced stuff, I've seen the doctors, the medication really, as you keep lifting that, that can make that nerve pain go away. And realistically, at a certain point, what I see with most patients is they kind of pass the nerve pain by. Their nerves get so bad that they're just not really sending any signals to the brain and the pain goes away and you're just numb. And you know, some people say that's a good thing. It's a thing that happens. It's kind of a known thing. The pain eventually might go away for you if the nerve pain gets bad enough. The number one tip that I can give you is great shoes and great orthotics. And let me show you why. Look at the nerves. Look at the nerves down here. Look at the nerves up here. Look at the nerves on the inside of your ankle. If I show you this foot, look at when you land on it barefoot, look at how it stretches. All these nerves are getting stretched. You're pressing into the ball of your foot. This is the number one reason. Every step bruises and damages your foot. Look at barefoot, how much your foot flattens out. But with an orthotic, look at it's perfectly distributed. You have an arch, there's not too much pressure in your toes, the ankle's not buckling out. Look at the inside of the ankle right now. It's straight, but right here, it buckles out. That stretches all those nerves. Kind of like you can get carpal tunnel, you can get tarsal tunnel. The nerves through the inside of your ankle from flattening are just like carpal tunnel. This can cause that pain because those nerves are so beat up and sore then at night you're gonna be sore and throbbing, numbness burning and tingling. That's the real cause in like 80 to 90% of people I see. I know that's a bold claim and there's no real way to publish that but I personally see that and I feel very strongly about that. And then the next thing you wanna do is look at the difference in these shoes. Look at, there's no support here. This is like walking barefoot. People think they're wearing a good shoe but there's nothing. Your foot gets obliterated. Whereas watch a shoe like this. Look at how thick and foamy that is. Look at that. That's a lot of great support there and it rolls across and it doesn't bend. Look at it. This one, it just lands flat. It's kind of like you're jamming your bones and your nerves and then it bends. This one gets a lot of cushion, gets a lot of pressure off. I bet you if you wore a shoe like this for a week, your nerve pain would get a whole lot better at night for most people if your health is otherwise controlled. One thing that I really love is stretching, massaging, exercises. These are the single biggest things. Stretch, exercise, massage those muscles. He is warm up when you wake up. Do some ankle circles. So move your feet, stretch out those nerves. As you stretch out those tissues, you get that fluid out of there. So when you wake up in the middle of the night, moving your feet around, walking, doing a little bit of stretching. This is my morning routine and nighttime routine that I would do if I had some neuropathy pain. Just stretch out your calves, stretch out those muscles. As you mobilize that fluid inside your muscles, it gets flowing, it circles out of those compartments and there's less stretching. Like for example, in your plantar fascia, as you massage it, there's less soreness, less fluid, less swelling. Massage that out when you get up. Get that fluid out of there. I love using towels because it gives you that extra stretch without leaning into your toes. It makes it a little bit softer because especially people have soreness throughout their toes. And 
there's nerves just like carpal tunnel in your wrist. There's nerves that come down your ankle. This is called tarsal tunnel. What you also want to do is sciatic nerve through your hip, through your thigh, through your groin area. You want to stretch that out. Get your glutes, get your hamstrings stretched out. I love this stretch board because this is how you can make measurable progress. Start on the basic setting, which is like 15 degrees, move up to 20 degrees right there. And then after like a couple weeks, you can work your way up to now 25, 30 degrees, and then like 35 degrees right there. And then eventually it goes up to like 45 degrees right here and work your way up. Get that flexibility going, get gradually more and more flexible and gradually your muscles will get less sore less achy and you'll develop less of that soreness and swelling throughout your muscles so there's these little half moon devices realistically if you do it barefoot you're going to be in some pain it's going to make your nerve pain worse as i mentioned get good shoes get good inserts that makes your foot cushion and it stretches out your hamstring your calf muscle when you get up in the middle of the night with nerve pain you can stretch that out get that blood flow mobilized this thing's like 10 to 15 bucks realistically i don't recommend it because you can do that entire big ankle slant board that thing's a little bit better personally. So see this thing, the ankle slant board, that works pretty good right there. And then work your way up to the higher levels. It gives you an even better stretch. I do that while I brush my teeth, I'm getting ready for bed at night. And that's it, just get yourself a routine where you focus on getting your muscles strengthened, getting your uh, calf muscles, your hamstrings, using these different devices can help. Or guys, thank you so much for watching our video on perineal tendonitis. Give us a like. Tell us how you injured yours. It really helps in the YouTube algorithm. We need your help.